interesting. And I, I wanted to thank, say thanks to, to all of you for your good research work. This is just uh, really helpful to us. Oh, it's fundamental. It's really important. Thank you very much. We can melt all of this water, pool it together, and drain it through cracks to the bed where it has the potential to really interact with how the ice flows. And so not only are you getting water running off, water being removed from the surface, but you're impacting the dynamics. And so you have to put both of those things together to understand how increased warming and increased melting would contribute to change through time. And, and, and we we're just beginning to scratch the surface of understanding how those processes work. Greenland, I think the rate of, if it keeps warming like it seems to be, I think Greenland's going to start losing a lot more ice. Again, you don't have to go rushing for the high ground, but it's something we really need to take seriously. And I think people need to sort of dig down deep and think about how they can reduce their carbon emissions, take the bus or whatever we can do. And uh, we, we speak uh, to a lot of Americans, and I, I wanted to hear from you what you would tell, if you were sitting in a living room today of an average American, what would you say to them? about what we're deal dealing with here, what we're seeing, and what their role may be in trying to help, uh, help prevent uh, the problems that we're, we're certainly seeing here. The number one suggestion I would give people is to become educated about the challenges that we face and to elect um, representatives to government that will take those challenges seriously, take science seriously, and make the large-scale changes that will make a big difference. That's going to be a much bigger difference than changing a light bulb or even buying a hybrid car. Well, well we, we knew that tomorrow or yesterday was your birthday, Sarah. Oh. So we actually brought a cake. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sarah. Happy birthday to you. Uh, the wolves that hunt and pack have been known to have success with hunting. I'm looking for axe. <laughs> what are you looking for, Al? Muscat. It it's gorgeous. It, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous view from here. And we're looking at all this terrain. It could have been here millions of years ago, probably was, maybe covered with ice. And then seeing these prehistoric creatures like musk ox and reindeer are pretty incredible. And it just makes you, you realize that, you know, this earth is so gorgeous and we need to preserve it. I have tears in my eyes. I. Um, I love the Arctic and I love this country and we've had just a fabulous three days of seeing the close connection between the Greenlanders and this beautiful land. I'm getting a little emotional and the fact that this is changing is very concerning to me and I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to be here and see all of this. We're back uh, here in Baltimore after a uh, just a great uh, jam uh, full trip uh, to Greenland. We had an opportunity to talk to some of the top scientists who are working uh, in this uh, area. We also walked uh, the glaciers uh, and saw the uh, molens from the air flew over the lakes that are forming on the ice on Greenland. And uh, also at the same time we had a chance to talk to local uh, people who are making adjustments to their lives, uh, dog sledders who can't uh, ride on the ice anymore, uh, others who have to build uh, dog boxes to keep their dogs cool in the summertime. Uh, there are a lot of uh, very subtle things, but very important things that, that impact the lives of the people of Greenland. And uh, when you add up the science and, and all of the experience of, the so, uh, of so many people that we talk to, it's clear that Greenland is changing and changing dramatically. Uh, we've learned a lot and uh, we feel that it was a successful trip uh, because it was an educational opportunity for everyone who was on this journey.